right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, at the gym, we like to call today a High Five Friday because Fridays are awesome. So I think that it would be in everybody's best interest to turn to your neighbor, give them a high five, and say happy Friday. But make sure that the neighbor is actually looking. <laughs> Don't slap them in the face. Not cool. Um, awesome. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, I know that um, I had a wonderful time getting here. Um, learned a lot of patience today. So I don't know if any of you experienced any traffic, but um, it's great to be here. Thanks to Ryan. Um, we just kind of ran into each other at the gym, and I saw him doing some things that are unique, uh, different than what your average Joe is doing at the gym. So um, we kind of got connected that way. So I'm really excited to kind of be a part of what he's doing. And I'm looking forward to, in a few years, having this little Fit Mornings be broadcasted you know, internationally and like have thousands of followers. So you guys are like in the foundation of it all. So it's awesome. Um, but and also, thank you to you guys for coming out here. Uh, I don't know what you had to miss, or you carved out time to be here um, to learn, to learn more about whether it's um, personally or if you are in the fitness industry and this, um, these two topics caught your eye. Um, but it's great that you guys are out here and you're just kind of excelling. Um, everybody wants to be better, right? I mean, whatever we're doing, we kind of want to excel, we want to ex um, succeed. So that's what I want to talk to you about today, um, which is mobility. And the importance, the need of mobility to um, have that progress and to reach those goals that we have set out for us. So some of you might not remember every single word that I say, which... It's okay, I'll forgive you, but um, just think of this one, if you can walk away, just think about this one piece of truth, and that is that mobility determines position, position determines efficiency, efficiency determines progress. Okay, so I'll say that again. So it's mobility determines position, position determines efficiency, and efficiency progress. Right? So oftentimes we just kind of go hit it hard. Right? We're just like, yeah, let's put the weight on the barbell and let's just slam it down. Right? So I kind of want to help you guys to just sort of strip away, um, strip away the, the weight, the power, the, the grit, and, and just kind of, and, and kind of test yourselves and, and asking yourself, am I mobile? You know, can I perform these um, movements to the best of my ability? And I don't know about you guys, but uh, um, I don't want to say oftentimes. Um, sometimes I'll wake up kind of feeling like the Tan Man from Wizard of Oz. Anybody with me on that? Yeah, we've got a, little, yeah, we've got a few Tin Mans. Right, so um, some of you may love hearing this, but you guys, you're a machine. You are a machine. So, you know, we need to think about machines. Um, they're only going to be efficient if they're not rusty and if they're mobile, if, those, if they're working properly. Um, and so we need to understand that to perform at our best, um, we need to be lubricated. We need to have our joints making um, you know, that synovial fluid to help us to move properly throughout normal ranges of motion and normal day-to-day -day, um, routines. So our joints, as we move those joints, it actually creates a synovial fluid. Synovial fl fluid will actually reach those parts of the joints that aren't reached by blood vessels that are bringing in the proper nutrients and lubrication. So we want to just stay mobile and do things that are kind of out of, out of the ordinary um, as far as our routine goes. Um, like I said, so you know, stripping down the weight and just saying, okay, can I actually do this movement pattern at, you know, to the standard? Um, and kind of looking um, at it at that way. And so, you know, so to think about that mobility, well, how do we know if we're mobile? How do we know if we can perform the certain movement? And, you know, is it just based on opinion, um, personal opinion or professional's opinion, or is there some sort of standard? Is there a standard operating procedure? You know, if you think about um, pilots, they have to go through hours and hours of training, right? Just tons and tons of training because you know thousands of lives are in their hands and so although they reach hours and hours of training before they actually get in the cockpit um, every time they get in the cockpit do, do I have any pilots here all right good because that way I can say something wrong and I won't be corrected <laughs> um, so they get in the cockpit and even though they might know their stuff 
they still go through the standard operating procedure that's created by, you know, the powers of the pilots, whatever. Um, it's a standard that everybody follows. So it takes out the opinions and, you know, the personal opinions. Ah, maybe I should do this today. No, nope, that's, that's, not, that's not your choice. Um, there is not room for opinions or just estimations, guesstimations. So if, if, you know, if we're thinking about that with flights and pilots, then, you know, how much more should we be thinking about that as just humans, you know, and, and our daily um, movements? And so you might be wondering, is there such a standard operating procedure? What do you think? Yes, good answer. You get a Air 5. Nicely done. All right, so um, I want to talk to you about um, that standard operating procedure. Um, but it, moving back real quick, you know, sometimes if we have an injury or if something, you know, isn't feeling so, what, so right, oftentimes we mistakenly kind of just point to a specific muscle and say, that, that muscle's not firing, that muscle's not stabilizing, that muscle's weak. And so we strip everything down and we just say, maybe we pinpoint. But if you think about it, over 200 years ago, you know, how much knowledge was there with anatomy, basic anatomy? You know, and so there were these amazing, beautiful dancers, martial artists who were performing these amazing movements, yet without a knowledge of specific muscles and muscle groups. So they learned how to perform this movement based on movement, you know, not on critiquing each and every different muscle. So, so what the functional movement screen does um, is that it kind of it creates a baseline that you can follow and that you can assess your movements based on that. And everybody goes through that same baseline. Okay, and so what it does is it, um, it's broken down into seven movement, movement patterns. It was developed in 1995, um, so it's relatively new. It's still, you know, trying, it's still progressing and it's still getting, um, you know, better knowledge. Has anybody ever heard of the functional movement screen? Yeah, a few of you? Okay, cool. Um, so it was actually developed to assess high school athletes' movements, movement patterns, and then in the process they just learned how much more um, effective it is just for the general population. So the, the purpose is to find limitations or asymmetries. Okay, so you might have um, really good shoulder mobility on the right side, but poor shoulder mobility on the left side. Right? And so that's what we're kind of pulling out. And we're not going to just say, you know, hey, you have poor shoulder mobility. That's too bad. Peace out. <laughs> like, okay, this is, is proactive. You know, so so many times when we have that injury, um, you know, the, actually the number one risk factor for musculoskeletal injuries is a prior injury. So does that tell us something about our rehabilitation program, right? So if you have an injury and then you go through rehab and then that becomes the number one risk factor to get it again, like, well, what, hap what happened there? You know, so we're, I think our society is very prone to being reactive and rehabbing, okay? So what we wanna do is kinda of take a few steps back and prehab, okay? So we might not be showing signs of an injury, um, so we might be feeling great, but little do we know that we do have some sort of a limitation and that can be a precursor to injury. So what this is doing is it's, you know, it's catching, it's nipping at the bud and saying, okay, let's strip everything away and let's see if you can move, the, if you can move through this range of motion correctly, efficiently. Okay, um, so what it is, there's, um, like I said, there's seven different movement patterns, and um, the, the purpose of the screen, number one, was to reduce risk of injury. Um, number two was perform, um, enhance performance. So going back to the very first thing I said was, you know, mobility was the foundation, and then the top of that pyramid is progress, right? So we want to be efficient. Um, we want to perform better. Um, and then there's a, and then a baseline, to have a baseline with actionable and, a, and effective steps. And then also to have just a language, you know, um, a common language among, among fitness professionals. And um, so the screen, um, as, as we go through the screen, there's a rating scale. And the rating scale is zero to three. And zero means pain um, among, uh, during the movement. One is the client or patient 
um, is currently unable to, for, to perform the movement according to the standard that has been set. Two is the client can perform the movement, but there's some sort of compensation or it can be accomplished with a, with a modification of some sort. Um, and we're going to go through uh, two of them in just a minute just to kind of give you an idea of what those might look like. Um, and then three is clear. Um, the client can go through the range of motion or that movement pattern according to the standard that was set. So after you go through the seven movement patterns, and it's funny because I'll have clients and that's the, that's the very first thing I do. I mean, I just can't, I can't imagine, um, I'm a, per, I don't know if you mentioned, I'm a personal trainer at Colorado Athletic Club. And so, you know, when I have clients come to me, I, can, I just can't imagine just throwing them into exercise. Like, all right, let's put some weights on barbell and let's go do some sprints. Like, I have no idea how their body is functioning. You know, what's going to happen? Is their foundation strong? Um, or is it just going to crumble, you know, two days later and they give me a call and say, you broke me. I'm like, uh -huh. Oh, that's not cool. That's not really good for my future. Um, so I always just like, like I said before, it's like, okay, you might be super strong. Yeah, you've got some big biceps. Great. You know, that's awesome. You've been working hard, but let's just kind of back it up a few notches and let's just see if you can perform and how you move. And then we'll build off of that. So I look at my scoring sheet and the screen takes about 15 minutes total. Um, and there's a hierarchy of what you need to focus on first. So the number one thing that you need to look at is an asymmetry. So there are a few different tests um, that have, you know, testing the right side and the left side. So oftentimes I'll see good performance on one, weak performance on the other. So those are what we need to hit first, and then we go through and look at the limitations, which would be like a one or something. Um, I understand too that um, functional movement screen, I did not go to functional movement screen college. Um, so there, there are certain things that it, 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 they are out of my realm of practice, out of my scope of practice. So if I get a zero on something, if there's pain in any movement, immediately refer them out. Are there any PTs in the room? Okay. So I just send them, you know, send them their way because they have their knowledge, I have mine. This is kind of a bridge in between, I think, because it, it's helping the prehab and rehab and it's a little bit more than just fitness. Um, and so, you know, I am aware of that, that there's there are things that are out of my school practice. But um, so, uh, so anyway, so this screen has certain corrective exercises. So like I said, it's not just, all right, you got a one, that's too bad. You know, like, let's actually, let's actually do something about that. Um, and if you're consistent with the corrective exercises, then you can, you can, you can possibly see improvement um, within a few sessions or within a few months. You know? So it all depends on your movement dysfunction. Um, because after you know, years and years of whatever we're doing in our day-to-day -day activities, we might, sort of, you, we might begin to have improper movement patterns. And so we need to retrain. So in corrective exercises, there are three categories. Um, the first one is mobility, so it targets basic freedom of movement. So are our joints able to go through the proper range of motion to complete the task? Um, the second category is the stability, which is targets basic motor control. So can you perform this movement while maintaining hip stability? Um, and you know that, so that's the motor control portion. So we hit mobility first. First of all, are you super tight? And so if so, you know, let's do some foam rolling. Okay, who foam rolls? If you guys, if there's anybody, okay. Everybody should raise their hand because foam rolling is the best. It is, it is wonderful. It is a poor man's massage. So if you don't get enough massages, buy a $12 foam roller and your life will be amazing. So we want to think about, um, sometimes my clients don't take this over very well, but you want to think about your tissue sort of like as dough. <laughs> And so you need to roll that dough out, okay? It's got these like clumps and, and you wanna make that nice and smooth. So that's what the foam roller is doing. It's just smoothing out that muscle tissue so that it, it's more pliable and you can move better. Everybody wants to move better, which is actually the goal of this. Their whole slogan is move, move well, move often. That's um, FMS, so basic, you know, it's pretty basic. Um, so, uh, so then the third category is movement pattern retraining. So like I was saying, we oftentimes will get into this habit of um, just improper movement patterns. So it's just saying, okay, this is how your body should be performing this. And so you just have to retrain your body. 
Um, so what I want to do is I want to just go through two exercises, two of the um, screens, and um, we can kind of just talk about them. But before I do that, does anybody have any questions right now about anything? Well, not like anything, like dating or anything. I don't have <laughs> answers for that, but anybody? OK. So can I get two volunteers? Yes. Yes. OK. You might need to take off your boots. Is that OK? Sure. OK, awesome, because it totally cheat with your squat. Um, yeah, you, um, yeah, maybe not. OK, uh, anyone else? Yeah, awesome. All right, cool. If you guys are super, like if you really want to, I mean, you guys can all come up if you want. All, all four of you can come up. That's fine. I don't mind. Um, OK, so this is the, this is the FMS kit. Looks kind of weird. And I'm sure, like, I would love to, like, hear the thoughts of my clients as they, like, as I whip this out. They're probably like, what am I about to do? I'm sure it's very interesting, but it's cool. Okay, so the first one is going to be a squat. So there's, um, typically I'll have um, the client do the movement three times unless I see right away that they can perform it. So what's your name? Rossi. Rossi, nice to meet you. All right, so um, let's go ahead and just face me right here. Um, toes are going to be facing forward. Um, typically in a squat, sometimes some people aren't having their toes forward. Um, why we have the toes forward is that it's standard among everybody, you know? So if we have any kind of, you know, we have to have some sort of standard. So the standard is straight ahead, and then we can assess from there. And it kind of can show a few different things about the mobility. All right, so you're going to hold this right on top of your head. And so you'll get your, good. So elbows are about 90 degrees. Now I want you to just raise it above your head. Good. All right, so keeping your arms nice and straight, keeping your knees in line with your toes, keeping the heels on the floor. Go ahead and descend into a squat as low as you can and hold for kind of two. Okay, good. And come back up. Good. Okay, and I'm going to have you do that again. So um, did anybody notice anything in that? Like when I said, keep the dowel above her head, did she keep the dowel above her head? You want to do it again? Now you're, now you're going to break, you're going to break your arms to keep it there. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit forward, right? Okay. So come on back up. Now just take a small step back, put your heels on that two by six. Good. Don't fall. All right, good. Now come down into a squat. Interesting. Ah, oh, beautiful squat. Awesome. So what I'm looking for, a couple things. Like I said, the knee alignment. Um, arms are straight, the dowel's above her head, and she breaks parallel. So did you feel a difference in that squat? Yeah. Yeah, big time, right? So go ahead and bring that down. So um, thank you so much. Great job. Great job. Awesome job. All right, so a couple things um, with her squat. So it cleaned up immediately once I put her, my, put her heels up, right? Do you guys notice that? Does anybody have any idea why that happened? Tight calves, tight Achilles. Yeah, so that could definitely be one um, and very, very valid. But what we. You do? Okay, okay. Was there any pain during that? Okay, good. But the idea. No, it's just tight. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It, it could be that too. And what's, what's interesting is that when I first started this, I just didn't read enough. And I would always say, oh, good, you know, Achilles. But what you can do is next you can assess the Achilles. Okay, so put your foot on a table and keep it flat. And do you have, you know, can you drive that knee forward beyond your toe? You should have about 30 degree angle, uh, 30 degrees of um, mobility. So what if she did? Then what would we say? Well, shoot. She has the ankle mobility. Where do we go? So, um, and then, uh, so it could be, it could be a number of different things, but it's a matter of looking at all the other screens and saying, okay, what's not firing? So it could be her core. It could be her core and her trunk stability. She doesn't have that initial reflex response to stabilize her trunk to be able to come down a nice straight position, right? So she initiates by descending by controlling the quads 
you know, engage in the quads to, to help in that, um, that descending motion, okay? So there's a lot of things that we can kind of pull from that. So I would score her a two. So she was able to good, have good, stand, good, good form once she put her heels up there, okay? Um, the other thing, um, lats. Her arms came forward, right? So some people are like, oh, tight lats. Um, but uh, let me do, give you an example real quick. Go ahead and lay on your back. We'll get you, I promise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, great. <laughs> yeah, you're over there like stretching. I'm like, come on, I, I can do this. All right, so let's assess her lats. Okay, so I want you to put your arms above your head nice and straight, okay? So now let's bend your knees and bring them up to your chest. Good, okay. Can we get those arms on the floor? Eh, not so much, right? So yeah, maybe that's gonna contribute to her poor squat form. Um, oftentimes you'll see the arms come forward and then I'll have, and I'll have a client do this and they've got great form and their arms are kind of contact with the ground. So it's not the lats. So then what it is it? Is it the core? Is it what? Okay, so it's not just a quick, simple solution. Good, you can come up, thank you. So that's why it's, you know, it's more, a little more scientific. You just kind of have to break things apart. Great. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Woohoo! So exciting. <laughs> okay. So um, same thing. Go ahead and point your toes straight ahead. Um, a little bit narrower. Yeah, it's about hip width apart is what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. All right. So put that right on top of your head. Find 90 degrees in the elbows and raise those arms straight up. Good. So do you squat a lot? I do. Yeah, overhead or? I do, okay. sometimes. Okay, awesome, let's, let's see. All right, so let's, <laughs> sorry, that was so mean. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and descend into a squat as low as you can. Ah, oh, nicely done, good, come back up, awesome. So um, three, you know, that was good, congratulations. Thanks. Yes, that was a real high five, really you got an air five. I know. Man, yeah, awesome. Okay, so what I would say is done. You know, he's he's good. He can just go squat a house, squat an animal. Um, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, so that you know everything was good. The dowel was above the knees. Um, typically, I would you know look in front. I didn't actually look at your knees, but I trust that they weren't. What, did you guys notice your knee, his knees? They weren't coming in. Okay, awesome. Um, so then we would move on to other things. Now, he might, he might have, um, you know, movement dis yeah, um, disability or dysfunction in another screen. Test. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll, we'll, let's do it real quick. All right. I wasn't going to do it, but we'll, we'll do it. That's all right. So bad. with this one, <laughs> so with this one, what I'll have is, um, open up your hand. So I just find the measurement between here and the end of his finger. So about a seven and a half. All right, so go ahead and put your, have you done this before? Maybe. Oh, well, thank you so much for the, being yeah. the great guinea pig. Okay, so hands out nice and long. Uh, sorry, I can't just, okay, out straight. And now let's go ahead and turn. So what I'm gonna look for is not so that his fists touch, but I want at least seven and a half or um, seven and a half you know, inches between or or um, less than that, okay? But if it's any more than seven and a half, then we've got a movement disability, okay? So arms out nice and straight. Now one fluid motion, I want you to try to bring those together in the back, this one going low, this one going high. All right, let's see. Does he hit it? He does, yeah. So this one is good, all right? That's my good side. Oh, good, I'm so glad you did that. Okay, so let's see the other side. Okay, all right, so we're at about a 10-ish, nine and a half, 10. So you're really not that far off, you know, it, so there is hope. Um, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's excellent. You know, that's excellent to know. Um, you know, what's interesting though is that sometimes when people have poor shoulder mobility, they're unable to keep their arms above their head in the squat but he's able to control it using that strong trunk stability. He's got great hip flexion. Um, I guess that's the other thing that I wasn't, I didn't tell you about, but the squat, you know, we're looking at bilateral, symmetrical um, shoulder mobility, and then also same thing in the hips, the knees, 
and the ankles. That's where, and, and trunk stability, right? So that's the purpose of that one. So shoulder mobility, so I would give you some exercises just, so that's an asymmetry, right? So that's something that we need to watch out for. So I would give him some corrective exercises. One might just literally be um, a lacrosse ball um, right in between your scap and your shoulder blade. Um, let's give you one. So I'm gonna have you lay on your back and have your feet out towards the table. So lay on your back. Okay, your arms are gonna go out like this, palms down. Good, so bend your knees and, whose pillow is this? They don't, all right, they don't mind. Okay, squeeze that between your legs. <laughs> Good, all right, so that's gonna maintain those, that, that's gonna help keep the knees together. This is called T-spine mobility. You guys should all do this and assess. This is something definitely you should um, work on. Um, so what you're gonna do is keeping your knees at a 90 degree angle, you're gonna slowly lower them to that side. When you do that, that palm's gonna stay down and this palm's gonna come up. Come up. Yeah, like just flip it. Uh -oh. There you go. Now, the goal is to keep that shoulder blade on the floor. Awesome. Okay, so that's on the floor and he's all the way down, right? So now lift up and do the same thing on their side. Palm goes down, palm goes up. Is your shoulder blade off the floor? What do you think? A little bit. So practice this one to just kind of test your range of motion. Um, good, you can come up. Um, I was having some shoulder mobility stuff and I did it maybe two days. You know, sometimes it only can take just a few, uh, few reps back and forth. So um, that's one and then shoulder, um, just getting the, getting the lacrosse ball. Um, another one is just wall slides. So you're on um, right up against the wall and you're just getting your, your arms in a, like a Y position and you just drive those elbows down to your side trying to maintain contact. Shoulder mobility is definitely really important. If, um, thank you so much. Great job. So I actually, if there's an asymmetry or if there's definitely like a limitation, I won't have my client doing any overhead pressing. Um, because they're at risk. So um, instead, we would focus on those corrective exercises, and then I'd retest. So I don't do that the, my whole time, you know, year after year. After a while, maybe a month or so, um, we would retest. What time is it? We got 10 minutes left, so wrap it up pretty soon. Questions. Sweet, okay. Um, all right, do you guys want to see one more test? Yeah, you do. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, actually, another thing um, that I want to mention about the squat. So, um, if the knees are if, if the knees are coming in, um, one thing that we can do is called RNT, which is reactive neuromuscular training. So, if my knees cave in, I don't want my knees to cave in. So, what I'd actually do is I would force that problem. So, I'd maybe put my hands here. I'd put a band, and I'd encourage that because what they would have to do is resist that, and that's when they engage the glutes, and then we get, this, we get the glutes firing, which wasn't occurring when we're doing this. We've got overpower in the adductors, and we've got weak, um, weak uh, hip mobility and um, weak, uh, weak glute strength, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's just practicing that kind of reverse psychology, like, okay, resist, resist, resist. So that's one of the ways. Um, okay, so trunk stability push-up. Who wants to try that? You want to try it? Do you, do you have any shoulder issues right now? Uh, I mean, as long as I'm just staying here and not outside, I'm good. Okay. Well, nice all right. Yeah. Well, I won't open up. Yeah. If, if, the, if the position I put you in, you're afraid to do it, then don't do it. Okay? All right. So. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. So go ahead and lay on your stomach. All right. So the standard is different for men and women. Um, with this one just based on our you know, natural body, um, body alignment and everything. So what you're gonna do is you are going to... I feel like I need to look at you. Yeah, I know, sorry. <laughs> okay, so stretch your arms out like you're gonna fly like Superman, which is so funny. I've had one person of all this time, like literally like come up and fly <laughs> like Superman. I was like, yeah, I was like, that's amazing. You actually listen to me. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you are going to pull your arms down to your side so that, hold on, up here, so that your thumbs are in line with your chin. There you go, good, okay. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull your toes in towards your shin, so plant the toes, lift the knees up off the floor, lift the elbows up off the floor, now in one fluid motion, are you sneaking those thumbs back? 
<laughs> Good, okay. Now in one fluid motion, go ahead and lift your body up off the floor. Uh, good. If you grunt, you'll probably like that be, be stronger. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. So you want to do it again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. Look, <laughs> community alone group grunt. <laughs> a little better. Yeah. Good. Okay. So come on down. Let's see where those thumbs were. So all right. So she kind of sneaked them down a little bit lower. So. If the client was unable to do it from the chin, obviously this is not how we do push-ups, right? This is what this is. Um, okay, yeah. Um, no, you're good. So um, side note, there are some uh, pain kind of tests too in a couple of them. This one, I didn't do the one for the shoulder mobility, but this one would be just push your upper body up off the floor and keeping your lower low body. Okay, is there any pain in your back? Good. Okay, so there's a few just pain tests that we check. Um, all right, so you're good. So what we would first do, you can come up. So first I check for women, it's the chin. If they're unable to, what I'm looking for is boom. Okay, did she have a boom? Eh, not so much, okay? <laughs> but that's okay, you're gonna be okay. Um, it's not that's just- It's not a good Friday, <laughs> kids. <laughs> you, you guys can go hang out, because I made you feel awesome, I'm so sorry. Um, but again, this isn't just like, hey, you have poor mobility. It's like, hey, you have poor mobility, but let's do something about it, right? It's just, it can, you know, it's a, it's a warning, right? We want, it, we want you to know. So if, if she was unable to do it from here, then I'd slide it down to the collarbone, okay? So if then she's able to do it, great, that would be a two. Um, so a couple things, you're good. Thank you so much, yay. So what I would do, um, again, there's a few different um, corrective exercises for that. So that's looking at reflexive core stability, right? So we might be able to do a bunch of crunches, right? But are we able to, all of a sudden, tighten everything up at once, and we're looking at core stability. We're, we are looking at shoulder strength, um, scapular stability and strength, okay? So, um, but anyways, those are just two of the corrective exercises. There are a lot more, but I encourage you to um, check out the, the website, functionalmovement.com. Um, you can learn a lot more just on your own um, and some corrective exercise if you find that you might be having some sort of dif dysfunction. But does anybody have any questions? How many exercises are there? You said there are a lot of, like, Yeah, different yeah, there's a lot of different options, yeah, for corrective exercises. How do you yep. know which ones? Are, if I came to you on the... Train me. What we, do you have a? Does everyone go through the first like three corrective, or do you just ask questions to me and see what might be hurting? As in, like, if you were my client, or if you're not yeah. my client. If you're my client, I'd put you through all seven different screens, and then based on the score sheet, I would say, okay, these are the top. You know, these are the first two that yeah. we need to address, oh. and kind of ignore the other ones until we pass that, and then we kind of keep going. So. Yeah, but um, maybe I'm sure there's some in, in Denver in the area, or if any of you are in Boulder, um, I totally would love to give you a free session, and you know I can kind of take you through the whole thing. I'd love to take you all through the whole thing, but can't do it. So anyways, all right, thank you guys so much. If you have questions afterwards, um, please feel free to ask me. I do have a couple of the books here, too. If you want to go through and actually just look, if you're curious as to what the screens are, you're welcome to check out the book. So thanks so much. Happy Friday. Uh, thanks,